The shallow seas is a vast warm shallow seaway in 100 million AD. 100 million AD a warm global climate has caused the polar ice caps to melt sea levels to rise by around 100 meters lower lying parts of the continents are flooded and the oceans have spread southwards from the Arctic and eastwards from the Atlantic vast tracts of Russia are now almost entirely underwater the shallow seas which stretch across northern Europe and ASI are punctuated by rocky islands. The sun-filled nutrient-rich waters of the shallow seas provide ideal conditions for the formation of reefs. Reefs are essentially calcium deposits built up by generations of reef-building marine organisms. These organisms contract calcium dissolved in seawater and use it to lay down protective shells over successive generations. The shells and skeletons of the reef-building organisms accumulate to create a great edifice, a solid foundation upon which reef builders live and photosynthesize. This edifice is a reef. The shallow seas and their colorful complex reefs have presented a stable environment for a long time they have persisted for so many millions of years that effective living systems established early on in the history of the habitat have been able to survive without serious challenges as a result creatures body shapes feeding methods and symbiotic relationships have modified only slightly over time however these warm seas have allowed one thing to change a lotan that is a creature's size. With the recent glacial period in 5 million AD came massive climatic disruption the seas filled with mud depriving the algae of the sunlight they needed for survival without the algae and the essential nutrients they provided the corals also became extinct some time later mountains of millions of years later there are large areas of warm shallow water and conditions are right for reefs to develop once more this timoth reefs are formed not from coral but from a prolific species of red algae. A variety of red algae is native to the shallow seas it is the most populous organism of these seas. Greater than where it has replaced corals in creating reefs, and as an important food or energy source for both reef gliders and ocean phantoms. The ocean phantom conceals a secret weapon inside specially adapted tentacles, in return for food and shelter, an army of vicious spindle troopers is on hand to defend the phantom from other predators. The spindle trooper is a species of highly specialized sea spider native to the shallow seas of 100 million AD. It has a symbiotic relationship with the ocean phantoms, which provide small armies of spindle troopers with shelter and food in exchange for defense. Spindle troopers have evolved to live side by side with ocean phantoms. A single phantom can have as many as 12 or so spindle troopers living among the tentacles, some of which have morphed into capsules similar in shape to bladderwort plants. The spindle troopers use as houses, despite being arachnids. Spindle troopers are vegetarians and feed on the red algae growing on the phantom's back. In return spindle troopers loyally protect the phantom from predators, such as reef gliders, the spindle troopers will leap at the attacker and begin biting it repeatedly until said attacker backs off, whereas the spindle troopers will swim back to the phantom. It is unknown if spindle troopers have predators of their own. The large form of a reef glider can often be seen sweeping through the water, silhouetted against the bright surface and throwing its shadow across a red alga reef. From its bulbous, teardrop-shaped body protrude three pairs of paddles, a long bunch of streamer-like filaments trails behind. It is difficult to believe that this is a variety of nudibranch, bigger than any of its relatives. The reef glider is a species of giant free-swimming nudibranch or sea slug found in the shallow seas of 100 million AD. Growing up to 4 meters in length, reef gliders are the largest known gastropods in history. They are highly successful, and by the 100 million AD mass extinction, in which they vanished, they had already existed in their final form for millions of years. The reef glider has descended from today's nudibranchs. Following the ice age of 5 million AD, the waning of the ice caps, gradual warming of the world's oceans and extinction of coral reefs, the sea slugs abandoned crawling in order to meet th. E challenge is presented by a warmer, more open environment. The nudibranch became oval-shaped. Developing paddles, flesh extensions extending from its sides and gills now trailing behind in a colorful display. Fully grown reef gliders can grow up to 4 meters, oval shaped and somewhat bloated, though less vibrant than its human era counterpart. The reef glider sports eyes mounted on stalks, a cone shaped, beak like mouth, and a display of bumpy, scent detecting chemical receptors, called rhinophores. As opposed to crawling across reefs by expanding and contracting its body, 
The reef glider has developed paddles, flesh extensions extending from its sides, each pair beats in turn propelling the animal across the shallow seas. While the adults are predators, young reef gliders derive most of their nutrients from red algae, feeding from the cup-like structures formed by the algae, where deposits of protein and carbohydrate are stored. Symbiotically, they also help the algae to reproduce. When the gliders reach their mouths into the algae's cups, their beaks become coated with sticky strands of reproductive gamete cells, which are then scraped off inside another algae's cup when the glider feeds again. The algae may be specially adapted to be pollinated specifically by reef gliders, as their flowers are precisely the right size and shape for a juvenile reef glider's front end. Young reef gliders themselves are hunted by ocean phantoms, giant colonial siphonophore, which catch them using their tentacles when the young gliders are gyrating among the red algae. Sometimes a baby reef glider will even approach an ocean phantom willingly, out of curiosity. The adult reef gliders, however, are too large to be harmed by ocean phantoms, and are in fact its chief predators. Adult gliders hunt ocean phantoms in packs, devouring their air sacs, tentacles, rudders, and keels, every part of the phantom beneath the waterline. Phantoms, however, also have a defense in the form of spindle troopers. Something large and sinister glides slowly overhead. It casts a long shadow which creeps across the irregular surface of the reef. This is not the shadow of an adult reef glider. But something much slower, much bigger and much more dangerous. The ocean phantom is a marine siphonophore native to the shallow seas covering central and northern Asia 100 million AD. It is a giant type of siphonophore, a colonial organism composed of several individuals which serve different roles, and can grow up to 30 feet long and be composed of several thousand polyps, making it the largest marine animal of 100 million AD. The ocean phantom's human-era ancestor is the Portuguese man o war the ocean phantom is a jack-of-all-trades creatures, it can propel itself by puffing out many dorsal fins and use them as sails, but can also use jet propulsion like cephalopods. The phantom's back is often covered in red-colored algae, which the phantom gives to the spindle troopers living among the tentacles. Beneath the phantom are trawling tentacles, some act as harpoons for catching prey while others become homes for the spindle troopers. Like their ancestors the phantom is capable of stinging. Ocean phantoms are nomadic by nature, traveling vast distances wherever the wind takes them. Small reef gliders are the primary prey of the phantom, but they themselves are hunted by bigger reef gliders. Fortunately the phantom has formed a relationship with the arthropod the spindle trooper, often having a personal army who loyally defend their host from attack, and in return the phantom feeds them the algae growing on its back. When volcanic eruptions blot out the sky in the 100 million AD mass extinction, the oceans of the world are hit particularly hard, as the microorganisms which the whole ecosystems rely upon die off quickly. The water temperature falls and the prevailing currents fail. The ocean phantoms deflate and die, and soon go extinct. The ocean phantom is a controversial topic mainly due to its complex nature and mutualism established with other organisms. Arguments include the siphonophore is too hypothetical. The reef glider has faced mild controversy. Primary arguments have targeted the nudibranch's large proportions presented in the future as wild. 